How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Voro Motors. I'm AJ Hart with another guide to improve your ride. So I've got a problem where I've lived in California and in the Reseda area for four years now and I still get lost when I go literally anywhere. It is so bad that like I have to pull up GPS when I go for a walk. Like that's how terrible it is. But the good news is that like, it's the 21st century, baby. So I can always just like whip out my phone, use GPS and walk wherever I need to go. The problem is that if you're on one of our electric scooters, fresh out of the box, you don't have any way that you can really use that GPS. But luckily, we started selling a new uh, little phone holder. So you can actually like put your phone on the scooter however you want it and actually use GPS, use your phone calls, use whatever you want to use on your phone while you're riding your scooter. You shouldn't text and drive at the same time though, that's wicked dangerous. So today I'm gonna go with you all on how to install and put this phone holder on the scooters. I unfortunately can't show you how it works on all of our scooters, but I do happen to have three scooters in my home because we're quarantined and I have to do work from home still somehow. And the best way to do it was by filling my room to the brim with electric scooters. So, I'm gonna be putting the phone holder on the eMove Turing, the Fido, and the little DYU sitting behind me. We haven't talked about that little guy very much, but uh, today might be the first time I'm talking about it on camera, so that'll be fun. Let's just go down the road. That helicopter definitely was in my audio and there's nothing I can do about it because I don't wanna refilm it, so I'm not going to. First things first, let's just go ahead and talk about what you're gonna find in our phone holder's case. You're gonna see the actual holding mechanism, the brace that goes onto the scooter, and you're going to see this little sandwich baggie. Now, inside this baggie, you're going to see this little black rubber square, which will break apart into little tinier pads, these spacers, two of them, and these two clear plastic spacers two Allen wrenches, and a tiny screw. Now, first things first, let's talk about the actual mechanism that holds the phone. Now, if you twist this screw on the side, it'll get, it's gonna open up more. And if you tighten it, that's gonna close it. And then these little rubber stops. This little mat, if you peel it apart, you'll notice that there's tiny little rubber stops on the inside, those are actually going to fit into each one of these pads, just to make sure that the phone has a nice comfortable hold. So I'm gonna go ahead and break these out and put them into the phone holder. There are two that are a little bit more square than the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on the bottom of the phone holder where it has more of a rounded hold. There we go. Now when I put my phone into it, it's gonna have a little bit of a softer squeeze, which means that this is garbage. Now the back of the phone holder, you're going to notice this little crosshairs and on the brace itself, you're gonna see a similar crosshair pattern and it would just slide right into there. Then you're gonna wanna take that screw from before and you can just slide that right in. Go ahead and make that finger tight. But we're gonna wait to actually fasten this down because I wanna make sure that it has the right angle on the scooter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that, back, that bolt back out and I'm gonna take the brace and the Allen wrench that fits for the brace screw I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it and open it up. Now, oh, don't lose that. Now, I'm gonna go over to the scooters and I'm gonna see where I wanna put this on and install it. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start with the Turing because it's the tallest one of the scooters that I have and I don't wanna squat down. <laughs> now, if you look at the Turing itself, you're gonna notice that on the other side, 
it's already a little bit full, filled up with the throttle on the space. And if we put it over there, the phone would end up covering the throttle anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on the left side where the brake and the bell is. Just because that's where we seem to have more space. With the brace open, I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up and loop it around. But there's a lot of wiggle room. But luckily, this thing came with those little black spacers. It's worth mentioning that there are two different spacers. So if I use this one, that fits really good when I kind of close it down. But if I were to have used the other spacer, it would have had a bunch of wiggle room still, and that's not very good. So we're gonna use the thicker spacer. We're gonna put the spacer in the brace. And then we're gonna loop it in, close it down, and we're gonna try to move it as far as close to the brake as possible. I'm gonna turn it up to where I can see that that screw's supposed to go in, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Damn it. Now you may notice that the bolt is coming up on this side, and while that's not really the most nice looking, I'm also in the camp that I don't think it really matters because you're not gonna see this very much because that larger phone holder is gonna be sitting on top of it. So you're not really gonna see it. Now I'm not gonna tighten it all the way because I still have to get this thing off and put it on the other scooters to show you what those look like. But I do wanna point out something. Now that the phone holder's on and I pushed it up against the brake as much as I can, if I grab this to kind of fold the handlebars down, you'll notice that it hits that but it does still fold down. The Turing has just enough space that that's gonna work out. On the Cruiser, that's not really gonna happen most, more than likely, just because the Cruiser has some more bits on the left side. Now you'll notice that if I go to unlock it and fold the handlebars down, there's just enough space to make that work. That's because I pulled it all the way to the far side to make sure that I had enough clearance. If I had put this on the other side where that voltmeter is, I don't think I would have had enough space to lock it down. So for the Turing, it makes the most sense to put the phone holder on the left side where the bell and brake are. As long as I'm here. If you were wanting to finish this, you would just go ahead and take this, and like I showed you before with those crosshairs on the back, you're just gonna put those up on the crosshairs and then take that little screw that we had before as well as that smaller Allen wrench and tighten that down. Please be mindful not to twist it too hard. You just wanna make sure that this is snug because if you tighten it too much, you're gonna end up busting a strip and that's just gonna make the whole thing fall apart. So just tighten it to where it feels nice and then maybe give it a little love tap to really ratchet it down. But there you go. It's good to go for the turning. Ta-da. So let's go ahead and move on to the DYU next. Now that I want to take it off, I'm going to have to break it down in pieces. First, I'm going to deconnect the actual phone holder part. Just bring that out all the way. I'm going to do my best not to lose anything. I would cry if I did, because I'm a big baby like that. And we're going to move on. Now the DYU is a little bit of a different case. Because the handlebars are so narrow, it doesn't really matter where you're going to put the phone holder, just because it's all right here in the general same center space. For simplicity's sake though, just because I don't like to have the phone near my throttle, we're gonna go ahead and put the phone on the left side again. Uh, partially because I'm left-handed, partially because that just feels the nicest to me. So this is gonna operate the exact same way. We're gonna go ahead and take the phone, Take the brace and wrap it around the handlebars. Now you notice I have that big spacer on this one and in that center it hits almost immediately. So let's try with the smaller brace. See the smaller brace does fit pretty nicely this time. So we're gonna go ahead and use that for the DYU. Just gonna go ahead and put it where we want it to be and then tighten it down just like last time. All right, now that that's on there, let's go ahead and put the phone holder part on. Now you'll notice 
Every time I put this on, I'm gonna make sure that the brace on the box that has like the curved on one end, we always wanna make sure that that's on the bottom. That way our phone doesn't slip out on a ride. And there you go, ready to go. Ta-da! And you're ready for a ride. Now, let's go ahead and do the last one that I've got, which is the Fido. All right, now I'll be the first to admit, because the Fido has these handlebars that are like this big U, it's really nice to ride, but it made me realize that I'm not 100% where the phone holder would make the most sense to put it. So, I'm gonna go with my gut instinct, which is to say, go ahead and put it on the left side again, just because the Fido has a, has a wrist throttle, and if I put my phone over here, I would, I would get in the way of it, and it'd be obnoxious, so. Again, just like always, I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna want it on my left side. So using the spacer, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here, right under the brake. Uh, it's not quite, this spacer's not the right size, so I'm gonna swap over to that bigger spacer again. There we go, that fits much better. So we're gonna go ahead and put the screw in. Now something that may wor be worth doing for all of these is that when you tighten it, you don't wanna tighten it all the way just yet. Tighten it so that it's snug, but there's still some wiggle room. You can tighten it down when you actually put the whole mechanism together to figure out what you think would look best for your phone. I'm gonna take a little bit more care with this one because I think that for the time being, I'm gonna leave this phone holder on the Fido just because during this quarantine, this is the one that I've been taking out on little errands to the grocery store and stuff like that. And again, remember, we're not trying to tighten it super hard. We just need to tighten it so that we know our phone's not gonna be shaking around like crazy in there. Next, just for my own sake, I'm gonna put my phone in the actual holder and kind of gauge what I think would be a good angle for it. I think, I'm a tall guy, so I need it at a higher angle. So I'm gonna angle it up where I think it would be right. And then go ahead and tighten that bottom based on where I want this thing to be sitting at normally. Now this bottom brace, we can go ahead and scratch it down a little bit harder, just because, you know, that one we're not too worried about breaking. It's just the bolt under here that we're worried about. And there we go. That seems pretty sturdy and safe to me. Cool, cool, cool. And that's how you operate the phone holder. It's really not that difficult. Uh, I just gave a couple tips and tricks as to where you're gonna wanna put it. I do wanna say really quick, if you have the eMove Cruiser and you wanna put our phone holder on there, you're gonna wanna put it on the left side of the handlebars, but once that phone holder is on, the handlebars may not come down all the way because you may not get enough clearance with the locking mechanism. Just something to watch out for when you do install that on that. And that's about everything that I've really got for this video. I hope that this helps. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and drop those down into the comments down below. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoy your ride.